It's time! The DDP, the Devlin Door Podcast, episode 10. Martin Devlin, I'm from the platform in New Zealand. Simon Dool, 98 test wickets for New Zealand, covering the T20 World Cup in Oz. We're going to be talking about that, the big build-up to New Zealand versus Australia on Saturday. Black Caps warm-up against India last night, abandoned in Brisbane because of rain. Simon flying there to Sydney to get ready for this weekend and all eyes on the pre-2020 as well because once again there's some upside down results from last night and you've got a group there with Scotland, the West Indies, Zimbabwe and Ireland tighter than a tight thing tied really tight at the top plus we'll be talking about the future and it is confused but there is still a future if it gets redone to a point where it can fit into all of the calendars, I'm talking about the One Day World Cup. Lots of topics to talk about. Dooley, welcome back, mate. It's not really the opener because the pre-tawny tawny's been going on, but you've just flown in <laughs> from Brisbane to Sydney where last night, really disappointing, our last warm-up match for the Black Caps rained out. Yeah, look, the whole country's been uh, a bit of a state. I mean, it's probably okay out west in Perth, and uh, not too bad in Adelaide, but Melbourne's copying it at the moment. Sydney have copped it for, oh, I'm probably thinking, three to four months on end. It's raining again now. We had the rain in Brisbane last night. I, I hate to think, Marty, that the, the games in Sydney and Melbourne are going to be hampered by weather in the first week, week and a half at least, which could be a really damp opener to uh, to the tournament. It, it'd be a real shame if that happens, but the forecast is looking fairly average for the whole first weekend. Okay, so and what what does that mean exactly? Is did are, are they going to be reduced matches, or or would they be more interested because it's a World Cup and actually having a full replay? Uh, no, it'll just be one point apiece. Um, obviously, there's a provision in the um, playing conditions to, I think, gain an hour or an hour and a half. So um, to try and get a five over contest in if it does rain, but that's about all the time you can claim. After the match, of course, a lot of these grounds are in built-up cities, built-up areas where the lights have to be turned off by a certain time, right. uh, come what may. So that will be the cut-off time, and um, you have to get a game in before that. Otherwise, it's it's one point all. So those teams that, and I look at maybe Pakistan, who have two games in a row over in Perth against the qualifying teams, they, you know, they could end up being crucial games because they might get a couple of, of wins under their belt early in the tournament and, and other sides might be hampered with rain. So, I mean, but even the, the first round, the, um, you know, the games that are going on at the moment, there's some, some cracking contests. Oh, I know, I know. The sides that we expected to win are, are not winning. Look, I want to get on to that in a second because there I was parked up in front of the TV last night. I was even tweeting about it, mate, that I was just absolutely enthralled with watching Scotland Ireland and I'm sitting there going, hang on a second, but I don't like T20, remember? But, you yeah. don't like it. You <laughs> hate it, Marty. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, but look, um, how worrying or not for the Black Caps because we got pantsed by South Africa uh, and, 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 and I thought we really did need one more tune-up game, not getting that before Australia. Yeah, real worry from uh, last night's point of view. I thought Engl uh, India probably needed it as well, to be honest. Um, but it was just, it was horrendous. It was torrential in, in Brisbane last night. And, um, you know, there was no way the game could have gone ahead. Both sides wanted to play at least 15 overs. They, they weren't really interested in waiting around all night just to play a five-over game because it wouldn't have done either side any good. Uh, I, I think, you know, the, the, the line is New Zealand have actually come off some decent cricket. I know they lost that final to um, Pakistan, but they beat them once. They beat Bangladesh as well in that uh, tri-series back home. Came over here. The game against South Africa would have been a big disappointment. Have they found out anything different? I guess not. They'll be playing there, um, you know, very much the same sort of side that they played in that final uh, against Pakistan in that tri-series. So they haven't really found out any more um, or fine-tuned any more, but at least they have actually been playing some competitive cricket. So, look, they'll, they'll rest up and, and um, you know, hopefully the weather plays its part on, on Saturday in Sydney. OK, we're speaking to the old mate Dre, Andre yesterday, Andre Adams. Um, and, and look, I, you know what I'm like, I'm a real weatherologist, mate. I, I just get absorbed in this. I mean, trying to sort of figure out whether the conditions back home are going to match the conditions over there. And he said, like you said, that perhaps the pitches aren't going to be as rock hard. It's a little bit spongy, a little bit of atmospheric as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, it, it changes quite a lot throughout uh, the different venues in Australia. Sydney obviously used to be a, a, a turning surface in, in a test match uh, situation. 
it's not really that way for these 2020 games. I expect a little bit of fresh nature about all of the pitches where we're getting the weather, particularly Sydney and Melbourne. Um, Brisbane, it looked a cracking pitch. It really did in that uh, those warm-up games that we had up there. So I don't think that will change. The, um, the new stadium in Perth, what they call it, the bird's nest or the Optus, call it what you like. It's not the Wacker, uh, but it has good pace and carry and bounce. Adelaide's usually just a flat, very good pitch. So there are differing conditions. The one thing I did like about what they did in Brisbane and what we'll see definitely in Melbourne uh, and, and in Sydney, hopefully, is the boundary ropes were, were, were decent. They were a really good size. It's going to bring the spinners into the game. So whether it be Sodi, Santner, um, Santner, Bracewell, whoever New Zealand look to go with, um, the spinners are certainly going to play a part in the tournament, I think. And now if you have a little sneaky, I, I, I'm thinking someone like Adam Zampa or maybe Adil Rashid, someone like that. I mean, people will be looking at the seam bowlers for the leading wicket taker in the tournament. I, I think there might be a sneaky spinner. Uh, and, and particularly one of those two, or even to brace Shamsi, because I, I think South Africa could go all the way this year. Wow. Wow, that's a big call, mate, because you know what happens when they get to the knockout. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's the thing, you know, we, we did an ICC thing about a month ago, Marty, and I was always look, I look at this now with a, a slightly different view, and I, and I wonder whether we don't look at how good Grand Elliot was, or we don't look at situations where someone just takes the game away from them. Do they lose? I mean, they were robbed in that game by the weather. Let's yeah, be yeah. honest. They were robbed by the Duckworth Lewis. They were, they were robbed by they the were. weather. Yep. And then one magnificent shot from the hero so jab. True. And, and, so uh, true, mate. all of a sudden, they were out of the tournament. Yeah, look, can I can I just interrupt you? Look, and and, and, and I've watched that. It was about last year. I, I remember watching about the last hour of it. And I'd forgotten about all the miscues that went up in the year that fell between their fielders. Yeah. Danny V, <laughs> I don't know how he squeezed that boundary with about three to go, mate. I mean, that was just how he it's knew. A backward point. There you go. How did he do that? Yeah. Plus, also, they had us by the absolute short and curls, didn't they, before the rain yes, came? And so, you know, they were beasting us. So, you know, when you actually, you're exactly right. When you're talking about the choke, I mean, that, you know, you can't. At the same time, you know, it just feeds upon itself because once these things start, it's like the All Blacks all those years. It just, it just seems to just knit itself together. And it, and it's a bit like you know the New Zealand situation against Australia, isn't yep. it? Over here, um, you know, we, we can say the same thing about ourselves up against Australia in their conditions, um, you know, and whether that sort of plays on the on the players' minds as well. All right, let's turn our attention then back to the pre-tournament tournament because, as I said, I was watching, you know, I just flicked over and I forgot it was on Scotland. And Scotland got off to a fly, 176, I think, and I thought, wow, that can they can defend that. And Ireland, after about 10 overs, had no chance. A guy called Camphor, I think, came in. Dooley belted about 70 off about 30, mate. It was just brilliant to watch. Yeah, Curtis Camphor, George Dockerell. Um, Curtis Camphor had a good time of it in the UAE last year, particularly with the ball. Um, talented all-rounder and, and just... Well, I, I love the emotion. I don't know whether you've seen on social media, but the raw emotion yep, of yep. the families afterwards. And, uh, you know, they were sidelined. There was sort of hugs and kisses from all and sundry. And, and just that that real feeling of, of Ireland beating Scotland. You know, we've had some, some cracking games. And these, you know, I, I'd love to see this done away with almost. And, and I want to see 16 teams, even to the point where in a few years' time we get to 24 teams wow. in a T20 World Cup. I think the 50-over the World Cup should be um, limited to eight and, and just the best eight in the world. And I think that the T20 World Cup is where the growth of the game is. And even to the point where we, we should definitely have 16 in the, in the main draw straight away and maybe a qualification for a few more teams up to 20 within the, in the next eight years, getting that to at least 24 teams in a T20 World Cup. Because I think that's the way forward and that's the growth and the development area of the game. So, um, yeah, look, we're getting some cracking games. Sri Lanka, the Asia Cup champions getting tipped over in the first game by Namibia. West Indies losing to Scotland. That group's all over the show. They've all played two and won one in Group B. So Scotland, Zimbabwe, West Indies and Ireland have all played two and won one. So that, that group is open. That's anyone's. And then in the other group, it looks like the Netherlands should go through. Should, yeah. Uh, you know, and then Namibia, Sri Lanka, UAE. Um, Take your pick. You'd think Namibia or Sri Lanka will go through with the Netherlands. Yeah, UAE look out. I mean, you're going to have to win two games by the look of it. Then it all comes down to run rate. But what it effectively mm. means now is that we get quarterfinal knockouts, you know, before the actual tournament proper starts. This is the DDP, Simon Dool, the Devlin Dool podcast on the platform, people. Just going back to that then, mate, and that's, a, you know, a, a radical kind of idea. But 
we got to figure out somehow how one day cricket now fits in because you know when you, when I was watching the other night I was just thinking look you know three hours is fine three hours 20 three and a half hours is fine I don't know who's got the physical time it just sounds so limp and lame I know Dolly but who's got the physical time to sit and watch a whole day of cricket these days as much as I absolutely adore the one day cricket world cup but to have it maybe where it can be condensed into two or three weeks with just the best teams maybe a lead in tournament first for eight to 16 or something like that and mm. then or, or sort of uh, and, and but then you have your top eight however it's actually going to get picked but I don't want to lose that off the calendar, yet at the same time, because of this format and because it's so quick and the turnaround is so quick and the players can play back-to-back games and so forth, I don't know. I mean, it is the future. I've, 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 I've had to accept it. There you go. Yeah. I've had to accept yeah. it. Well done. Well done. That's, that's, a big, that's a big call for it you, is. Marty. That's, it that's is. very good. I know. But you're, look, it, it's the future development of, of these nations, of Namibia, you know, of, of Zimbabwe getting back into world tournaments. Um, you know, of, of the UAE, of Canada. It, that is where the development... I mean, the next T20 World Cup is going to be held partly in the West Indies, partly in America, wow. in the US of A. So, so that's the start of the ball really rolling for me. And that's where we can grow the game, the women's game and the men's game. You know, and I want to see more teams involved in these, these T20 World Cups. But I, I think the 50-over World Cup can be condensed. It can be a, a three-week tournament. It can be the top eight teams only in the world. Yes, there's a qualification prior to that. I, I get all that because we're all playing for um, world championship uh, ODI points now as well. Remember that South Africa are out of it. South Africa have to qualify for that 50-over World Cup next year in, uh, in, in India. So they're, they're out of the top eight at the moment, which is, is a real surprise from, from their point of view. So I like the fact that you're going to have to qualify for that top eight, and that makes it an elite World Cup, and the T20 is the growth of the game. All right, then, Saturday, us against Australia, Simon. And there's something about the New Zealand cricket team when we play the Aussies over there. I fear that Mitchell Stark is going to pass Kane in the hallway and he's not going to say hello and then Kane's going to collapse and our whole team goes with it. I mean, obviously, I'm being facetious here. But you know, they own us upstairs, don't they? How the hell do we overcome the mental? I'm not talking about playing them. I'm talking about actually overcoming our own mental block against them. And don't deny it, Black Caps, because it's there. It's real. Yeah, it, it is real. Um, look, I, I'm looking around for players, and at the moment, I don't know that Kane Williamson is the player to to sort of take that mantle. I think Devin Conway holds a, more of a key, to be honest. I think just the quality and the class and the, the way that he's playing at the moment, I think he holds more of a key than Kane does. And Kane can ride off the back of a Conway. If we happen to bowl first, then, you know, we, we, we just need Trent Bolt. We need Trent Bolt to do something in that first over to, to rip a pole out, to go through Aaron Finch, to put them on the back foot, to nick Davey Warner off, something along those lines, just to give us that little bit of belief. Can we beat them? Absolutely. Are we favourites? Hell no. You know, we are probably 80-20 at the moment to play Australia at, at, at home. And and if we do happen to pull that, that win off against Australia, then we go a long way to making that, uh, that semi-final race. But we are well and truly underdogs, deservedly so. They've got an incredibly strong side. They've got, you know, power-packed batting. They've got big boundary hitters, and they've got a quality bowling lineup. So, you know, and genuine all-rounders. When you look at Maxwell Stoinis, um, they are genuine all-rounders. They they pick three three seamers and Stark, Hazelwood, and Cummins. But I still think they should pick uh, Kane Richardson ahead of Cummins, but they won't. And they'll play Adam Zampa, the leggy, and then um, Tim David will bat at uh, at six or seven around Matthew Wade, and they've got sort of two bowlers, genuine bowlers, in their top five or six. And if Mitch Marsh bowls, it makes it three.